You know, I'm, yeah. I'm cracking myself up for two reasons. Number one is you guys are talking like King is awesome in Tekken 3. And he was, like, moves-wise. <laughs> but if you look at him now, it's the stupidest costume oh, a character what? has ever had in a fighting game. Oh, yeah. He's wearing, like, sweatpants we're not and sketchers. We're, no, like, we're not friends anymore. Words. No, there's no way. You're not going to trash King. <laughs> the other thing I'm laughing about is that, like, Bill... You know, 25 years ago, saw this game. I'm like, that's great. I'll see you in 25 years. <laughs> you know what I mean? like, like, how did that happen? <laughs> Welcome back to the Nerd Nest Podcast. We've got a whole bunch of uh, handheld news to talk about. We've got PlayStation news to talk about. We've got video games that we've been playing. So I figured that we could start off with the, um, well, MSI. We we talked about the MSI Claw a couple of weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago at this point. Yeah. And there's been a lot of back and forth about whether or not it was going to be a uh, 120 hertz uh, VRR display. And now, uh, apparently, MSI is confirming that it is going to have a VRR screen that will uh, kick in at 48 hertz and go up to 120 hertz, which is, I think it's basically the same thing. Like, I'm assuming this is the same panel that's in the ROG Ally, right, uh, Russ? That sounds, yeah, the specs sound the same, you know, and it's funny you know, during my CES like visit when I asked them about this, I don't know if you guys remember, I said like I asked them directly about this and they said, yeah, you know, and it was one of those where I'm like, was this a mistranslation, you know, because native, uh, like they weren't a native English speaker, but there were, were they just like not being able to tell me something, you know, I mean, and so it's pretty funny. Did you see like the, there's an echo, by the way, a small echo, but did you see the Verge like published? Like right. two versions of this article. <laughs> yeah. It was it yeah. was weird. Right. They did one and then like they just kept the same URL and they're like, you know what? We're gonna change this. It now does have it. And that's two different Asus rap reps who said this. You know what I mean? So it's yeah. even or not Asus, MSI, I'm sorry. MSI like reps who said this and it's uh yeah, that's some internal issues right there. And and you weren't alone too, right, with CES because it was very much mixed messaging from just me watching all the different previews of the MSI Claw. Some said absolutely no VRR. Others said it doesn't have VRR now, but they are exploring it. And others said it doesn't have VRR now, but it will. So it felt like there were three different responses just based on- So this on... thing's coming in hot, right? Like, they're yeah, just like- Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they're just trying to get it to market as quick as possible. Exactly. So I'm, I'm a little concerned about that. But VRR does sound good. So hopefully that sticks. The fact yeah, that it's... nobody, like, that there's multiple people telling people different things, and like Russ is there at CES talking to them, and they're like, um, maybe? Like, <laughs> why would you show up at a big event like that and not have that kind of information ready? for your big announcement like that's so weird to me and it 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 gives me a whole lot of pause for this particular device yeah i feel like they are definitely trying to rush it out uh the release as soon as they can probably because the chip itself like i don't know like they want to be first to market with it or something you know and so i think there's probably some sort of rush in that regard maybe intel's giving them some pressure i don't really know but they they definitely feels like it is like jimmy said is coming in hot yeah real hot the Lenovo Legion Go had a similar deal, right, with the portrait display. So, like, at the at all the previews, it was definitely a portrait display. But in the Lenovo forums, there were the one of the reps or one of the engineers kept saying, "Yes, it was portrait, but the final product will be landscape," and never I really, happened. I really hate that. Like, oh, th this is this is pre-release, so we can't. yes. It's like, how many times has pre-release really changed all that far or deviated from what actually occurred? So you yep. always have to, like, you're forced to, like, this is still pre-release, so whatever. And uh, thankfully, when I had, I bought mine retail, and when I got it, I posted it. I was like, I was like, womp, womp, it's portrait. And people were, like, showing me forum posts, like, no, 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 that's pre-release. I was like, no, 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 I bought this from Best Buy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, right. I mean, I have a Legion Go that is, I have the, the pre-release unit that right. they sent me. And I also have the retail unit. I couldn't, I couldn't, it, like if you put them down side by side, I, I have stickers on them right now, so I would be able to tell. 
Um, but if they didn't have the stickers on them, I could not tell you the difference between the two. You know, the Lenovo Legion Go, despite the software feeling very hot, I have to say the whole Joy-Con implementation, I was really impressed with. Like on day one, I was still really happy with what they had um, yeah. because it, it operated what how you would assume that it was going to operate. When you dis you know detach them, they would work like how the Nintendo Switch does. Yeah. And they reasonably did. I never really had a problem with them ever. And I tried doing it multiple times. So I have to give them kudos for that at the very least. And I know I still see software updates and stuff to it. So yeah, I just got to... one. But like, I think nice. it un unlocked uh, like the F FSR 3 type thing or something like that. Yeah, I saw oh, it because I just bought one. Yeah. And yeah, I'm also very impressed with it. But I've got all the updates that they put out since, you know, when it launched and it's really finicky when you go to update it because the newest update in December, I guess, unlocked the ability to like update it through its own app, like the Legion Space. But before you had to like go to the website, so I had to do a few updates in a row to get to that point, mm -hmm. and they took forever. But once mm -hmm. I got it up and running, I w I'm really impressed with it. I I've been liking it a lot. How do you yeah, feel so about comfort wise? I like it because I have bigger hands. I still prefer the Steam Deck OLED because that just fits perfectly. But between the Legion Go and the ROG Ally, the ROG Ally feels sharp. It like digs into my palms a little bit. So I never really wanted to play on it for more than like two or three hours at a time at most. But the Legion Go, when you kind of get that hand cramp feeling after a few hours, you can just like put out the kickstand, throw it down and then start playing with the Joy-Cons detached. And I think that's, that's true. really cool. They, they've kind of been my favorite of the Windows handhelds I've tried by like hmm. a pretty wide margin. That's my favorite as well. I know, Russ, you prefer the um, the ROG yeah. Ally to the Legion Go. Um, as far as like the sharpness, I know that we probably talked about this a couple of weeks ago when you got hands on with the claw. How did the like Jimmy's talking about the sharpness of the ROG Ally, which yeah. Is definitely an issue, but it's not a big issue, and it's still pretty right. comfortable. But did you feel like the claw was better or worse? I can't remember. The claw is uh, more rounded in those parts where the ally is sharp, and so it does. It, it, for, you know, for Jimmy's use case, I think it'll be fine, like it better. For me, I don't mind the kind of sharp edges on the um, the ally, just because I don't know. It's not. Hold on, my auto, auto focus is getting out of focus. There we go. Uh, so. I don't really mind the ROG Ally, the sharp edges to it, because I think it still kind of fits my hands, you know, at least the way I hold it. I don't like the sharpness of the Legion Go. Like, I found that that one, oh, that's uh, funny. like, the, it's flat at the, the top of it, and then it kind of just cuts off at a 90-degree angle. And so that part is, uh, like, rough on the edges for me. And so there's nothing perfect with any of these handhelds. But yeah. I do think the MSI Claw, one of its benefits will be that it is a fairly ergonomic and rounded controller altogether. Hence the Claw. Yeah. The name. <laughs> it looks more rounded in the picture like you can tell like it's got that sloped down edge and that's kind of i think my hand just got used to the way the steam deck is honestly like with my mm -hmm. the, like meat of my thumb kind of just rests yeah. in that like slope and it feels very comfortable yeah i want to go back to the engineering sample thing i want to do a little behind the scenes because I'm, I'm i talk about this in my review Mm -hmm. not review i'm not calling it a review which is what i want to talk about the one x player x1 so that is wow. this guy. A, a worse name than the <laughs> right. claw? A one worse X name. player X1? One it doesn't X say pro. <laughs> it's no, like it the doesn't Xbox say pro. Series X1X or something. Yes. Go ahead. I'm sorry to interrupt. <laughs> no, no, you're good. So this also has the Intel chipset. The version they sent me, and I'll hold it up one more time, even though it's faded out now, but it says prototype on there. But the version they sent me is the 135H, so the same as the $699 claw. Um, but on the Indiegogo, they're not selling a 135H version of the X1. They're selling a 125H and a 155H. Oh, interesting. And also, this is supposed to be the three-in-one, right? So you can use this as a tablet uh, with the kickstand. You can use it as a laptop with the kickstand and the keyboard. And you can use it as a handheld with like these slots for controllers, just like the Legion Go. Okay. But they didn't send me the controllers either. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what? So, yeah. So with the controllers, they said, I'm going to read actually for the controllers and the chipset. This is what they said. They said, thanks for the update. I was informed that the controllers need to be sent after Spring Festival. That's their uh, holiday that they're on now. Uh, because during tests, there has been a slight bit of looseness between the controllers and the X1. So I 
first of all, I do appreciate that, them disclosing that, but mm -hmm. I'll get to it. Uh, the second half says, we understand you and your audience are concerned about reviewing early hardware. We want to assure you that our engineering team, um, that according to our engineering team, the final production units equipped with 125H and 155H will closely represent the performance of the model you received, 135H. Now, if they were to closely resemble it, why would you, I would just buy the 125H. I would buy the cheaper one because it closely resembles. So right. I, I don't- That's bizarre. I don't accept that language. It is very bizarre. Um, and so I, I don't feel comfortable calling my video a review. And it just goes back to like what Carrie was saying about engineering samples. I feel like all of the companies kind of use this pre-release period, pre-embargo period to push their marketing points. Um, and I'm, I'm starting to kind of push back, right? Like I'm not gonna call it a review if you're not giving me the final product and things like that. So it's just, it's just a like Jimmy said, it's bizarre. Not yeah, not you know, just I would not say... the final product, but they're also giving you a product that That's effectively does not exist. Yeah, right. Because right? there's you cannot Correct. get that chipset. No, yeah. So it's like you have the 135, so you're directly in between GPU core counts of the 125 and 155. So you'd be like, mm -hmm. this is like between them. So what does <laughs> right. that help anyone? So like, you see these benchmarks, just imagine them going like this and, and you get an idea of where that is. Like, yep. just you can kind yeah, of tell by looking the at bars. why the controllers are loose. It's like, that's a oh, crazy yeah. setup they've got going on there. I don't, yeah. I don't like, I, I could imagine some reality, I guess, where that would be comfortable, but like, I don't know. You got to look this up if you're watching or listening. Cause it's like the screen yeah. and then the controller looks like too small for it i almost need like how the portal set up with like the bridge across the back or something it's, to yeah right yeah. In. Like, okay. it's very ps portal like jim yeah, can you share bridge would help a lot can you share that that tab i don't have the tab can you I just, share that I had a tab? youtube video on my phone that i can't find pictures oh, of it i can okay. only find like their trailer which What's is it called like again because i want to i want to put it up there for the youtube uh one viewers. x player x1 the world's first large screen three in one first. handheld Yep. Okay. <laughs> There's an Indiegogo. I don't know if there are images up there. It looks like there are. Yeah. Are you? It, it looks. It looks comical. It looks uh, more comical than the PS Portal does. Yeah. It, it's oh, like it's so round. <laughs> it's like uh, you don't know how any of this passed through. Right. Like I uh, that's, just looking that's at the not picture. It. That's, that's the. That's, oh, the, yeah, that's, that's the, the old one. That, yeah. yeah. That looks like Hold an on. improvement. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's yeah. the old one. <laughs> that's that's how you would imagine it to be. I'll share. So the, okay. uh, I, I will mention while you're pulling that up. So I got a similar email from them saying, said, hey, we've got the pre-release one, but it's got all these problems. We can't send you the controllers, that kind of stuff. And I just said, no, I'll wait. <laughs> you know, like there's always this like uh, feeling of, you know, with us YouTubers in particular, like we want to get it early so we can show it off, you know, get that extra mm -hmm. click or whatever. But there's there's a bridge there. And I think that they're expecting us to be their hype men. That's what they're trying to get us That's to be. It. As, oh, opposed, as opposed to a reviewer. Yeah. And so I told him, I said, I will wait until you have something that's not wobbly and it's more closer to what an actual retail person would get. And so that that's what I told him. They said, fine. And so they didn't send me anything. And so, um, yeah, I don't, I just don't think it's ready yet. And so I appreciate Rich, you and taking, taking one for the team. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. I wish they had told me in advance that they, that the controllers <laughs> are wobbly. I, I, they sent, I literally like was looking in the box cause it wasn't like a normal box because it's a prototype. Mm. So I was looking in the box for the controllers. They weren't there. And I'm like, Hey, did you guys make a mistake? Especially because I saw ETA prime had the controllers. So, oh my gosh. Yeah. I, I have, um, uh, I have some one net stories that are along those same lines. They're like, oh, hey, how's it going? We're going to we're gonna send you this stuff. I'm like, cool. What are you going to do? And they go, who are you? And I go, you, had, you emailed me. <laughs> <laughs> I've had that same thing happen before. <laughs> what the hell are you they talking have, like, about? So many different people at the, some of these companies that are all on one chain with you. It's like they're all logging into the same email or something. And then you'll see it change in the middle of a chain. And then the like cadence won't break. And I'm like, that's kind of impressive, honestly, yeah. that you can keep this conversation going. Like yeah. I, I will say, and this is, this is not related to hardware or whatever, but I cannot stand whatever email that they're using. Wow. Whenever, when I'm replying to these companies, it quotes everything and moves it over a little and then quotes everything and moves it over a little. Oh, and then oh, after yeah. I've been on a conversation with somebody for 50 emails or something, it's just an unreadable mess. Yeah. And I don't understand. Maybe it's Gmail's fault, but it's just, 
it's just impossible to, to like i always have to say can we start a new thread because i can't i can't deal with this anymore <laughs> yeah uh anyway so that thing looks terrible um with yeah. the tiny little controllers i mean i get what they're going for they want to give you that bigger screen I, so I, i'll say this i'll say this yeah. it's it's very much like the surface pro right so if you've ever used a surface pro this is aside mm -hmm. from the controllers right just as a laptop it's pretty much the exact same as a Surface Pro um, in form factor. Not they're, they're like the over, Surface Pro would overheat in a particular place and this doesn't have that problem. But just in terms of for, form factor, it's that. Now, if you want to, you know, have a laptop that you can transform into a really weird handheld, then <laughs> there's a chance that it works well. Again, I don't have the controller, so I can't say. But I am curious, right? Like, I hope it does work well. I hope they can fix that looseness because I would like to be able to do that. But, yeah, I can't say. Well, speaking of the looseness, you know, you talk about the Legion Go. Mm -hmm. That thing, like, it's it like the switch, you slide through a thing and it snaps in, right? Mm -hmm. When you use the Legion Go, you just push a button and they just basically just detach, right? So it felt really, it didn't, I, I was worried that it would feel like wobbly, but when you snap them in, wow, does it hold on really well, yeah. I think. The mm -hmm. Legion yeah. Go, like the, their way that you, they that the Joy-Cons attach to the side of the true tablet. Strike. True was, strike. Yeah, true yeah. strike. Yeah, true yeah, strike. Yeah, I'm going to call them Joy-Cons <laughs> people. Um, <laughs> the, if, like it feels really solid, at least. For mine, um, yeah. everybody no. else feels solid. I think it's like one of those things yeah. where you're like, y you really want to hope that someone that actually is going to be using this day in and day out will give us all a report like a year later. Like a year For later, sure. I've been using these things like, you know, gangbusters and they're still, you know, whatever. But like mm -hmm. on the Switch, mine started to wobble after like a few months. Um, mm -hmm. uh, so it's not like it's drastic. Like it just has like a little play in it. Mm -hmm. uh but so far i mean I, I for the week or so that i used mine i never had any type of wobble on mine which was impressive I, again uh, the entire part of the hardware package that lenovo did for the legion go they really i was really impressed with it i just wish that they went with a landscape based screen yeah outside of the landscape based screen because of the fact that they nailed the hardware so well like i didn't mind i gave them a lot of like leeway with the software like it was obviously yeah right but like just you can you can fix that if you're dedicated you can fix that but they yeah. nailed the hardware and that was difficult to do with the hardware that they had in mind exactly like if you want if you are a person that likes the joy con type of thing and wants that functionality to instantly switch their legion go is like the only thing that you're going to tell anyone to get you're like oh you want that get the legion go there's there's like it's such an easy thing to like that's for you i don't have to say anything else there's nothing else i have to talk yeah. about you're you want the legion go um, I, I want to start using it. I'm going to start going to the gym. I'm going to try to use it so that I can just use the joy cons while I'm walking and just put the tablet nice. part in the thing and just cool. play a game like that. I want to, I want to get, give that a go. I used to do that with the switch, but I always had a small screen and mm -hmm. the Legion go is appreciably larger. Yeah. You can, you can say that again. Uh, that's the thing I like the most about it is, is how huge that screen and it, it makes the, the issues with windows not as big of an issue but they they're still issues as soon as valve ships steam os i'm nuking that thing from orbit and throwing steam os on there and i'll never look back because i just don't <laughs> play the games that are on windows that that people that everybody seems to care about and if it's a game pass game i'll just play it on my xbox um all right well speaking of speaking of games uh let's before we hit the rest of the the news like the the uh, next PlayStation handheld or in the state of play and you know, all the other stuff that we've got to talk about today. I thought we would start, uh, take a second and talk about the games that we've been playing. Uh, Jimmy, I'm going to have you start us off. You've been Ooh. playing a couple games. Can you pick one? This episode of the nerd nest podcast is brought to you by humble bundle. Humble bundle has been around since 2010. They sell games, eBooks, software, and other digital content. Their mission is to support charity while providing awesome content to customers at great prices. They started in 2010 with a single two-week Humble Indie Bundle, and they have grown into a full store full of games, bundles, a membership service, a game publisher, and more. I've been a big fan of Humble Bundle for years. I subscribe to Humble Choice because every single month, they send me games that I can play on my PC, 
And guess what? If I decide that I don't want those games that particular month, I can say, we'll skip this month. And what's even better is if you cancel your subscription, you keep the games. This is not where you are subscribed. And if you cancel, you can't play your games anymore. You are subscribing and getting so many games every single month. So if you want to support the channel and you want to check out some fantastic deals on games, then check out the link down below. Yes, uh, I put about 10 hours so far into Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League, which is a terrible title and it's really hard to Google. Um, <laughs> I kind of like it. I know everyone's hating on it pretty hard, big time right now. I'm like up two minds on it really. We're like taking it as is. It's a very fun game. Like the actual combat is probably one of my favorite third person games like shooter style combat games i've played in a long time but then mm. the other half of my brain is like this took nine years and like this is what they were making for that long like if it only if this came out a lot quicker and it was like a interstitial game between the next single player thing or whatever i think it'd probably be received a lot better but knowing that they took so long after arkham knight and just some of the story things they're undoing from the ending of arkham knight i can totally understand where the hate is coming from but I spent all Friday night playing it with two of my friends and we had a bot that uh, when you have bots in this game, it'll pull like players from your friends list. So if someone has a character who's leveled up, uh, it'll just add them in as your bot with their full loadout and everything. And they'll actually like, oh. collect XP and like loot. And then when your friend logs back on, they'll get the progress that oh, their cool. bot made in your game, which is really cool. So we had essentially like a four player squad and it's really fun when you get in the groove of it and the story while the actual like plot thread is nothing crazy it's incredibly well directed and the it has probably the best face animations i've ever seen in a game like wow. really impressive stuff uh, on pc it runs decently like you have to use its version that it wants to use instead of dlss you should use taa because dlss introduces stuttering but once you if you just stick with the defaults it picks it actually runs significantly better for me on pc than ps5 you get way less stuttering on pc once you have it all configured right and you can run at higher settings and hold the 60 fps like a lot smoother than you can on ps5 the loot system is really good. It's just like every other looter where it doesn't explain some of the deeper stuff in it. So once I discovered that, like there's a whole system where some guns can like have their own set like level limit where you can level the gun up and then pick what stats you want to invest in. And it actually like noticeably changes the gun. So you can take guns from the beginning of the game, basically to the end, if you get the right loot pool at the beginning of the game. So me, someone who plays a lot of looter shooters, there is a lot here that I really like. It's just the variety is the thing that just kills this game. There is yeah. zero variety. You just oh. either do a payload or escort a bus, and that's it through the entire game. That's every wow. mission, every side mission, every story mission. That's all you're doing. And then I looked at the end game, and it seems like they went with the Outriders sort of end game where there's going to be three different incursions you can do every week, and then they'll swap out every week. But it's running the same thing over and over again is not fun. What I will say is it's in a lot better of a spot than the vast majority of other looters, especially Avengers, in the sense that it's not broken in pretty much any way. Like, everything works as it's intended to, and, like, the end game is there and functional. It's just, I want to see if this game continues to get better, and I'm worried about it now because apparently it's not selling very well. So, I'm wondering how far they'll actually take it, but... Yeah. Like my opinion on it so far is like I'd give it a solid like 7.5 solo and then it's like hovering on an 8 with friends. Like it's just a lot of fun to play. Yeah, I was going as you were talking about like it being bare, I was thinking that the, normally like that's the sort of thing that would grow over time, but with this game, yeah, it's not sold very well. So, I don't see that happening. And, you know, I also see people waiting for it to go on sale right, right? like 70 dollars mm -hmm. for what you said i know has scared a lot of people off and they're like maybe i'd like it but not at 70 dollars it's not good enough to buy to just play through as a single player like arkham story game so i get why people are waiting and it's it seems like yet another live service game where the mm -hmm. first season launch is really going to determine whether or not it catches on and from the like roadmap image that they shared which 
I want to give them props for sharing so much information about what's coming in season one. From what they've shared, it seems like it's just going to be more of what's already in the game. And I'm like, that that's not what they need, right? Like, I don't need a fifth playable character with their weird-ass version of Joker. But what I need is more variety. And it looks like they're just adding more of what's already in it, which is not a good sign. I think I feel like a lot of the I, having not played the game myself, I feel like a lot of the hate that this game is getting is completely dissociated with the gameplay itself and it's all centered around the fact that this is a live service game and Rocksteady is known for making these single player uh Batman games, the Arkham games, and people wanted that but the the company decided to make a you know they wanted a people the company decided to make b and without giving it a chance everybody was just like well b sucks and i'm not interested in that so it's terrible again i haven't played it so maybe it does suck um but then there's also the controversy about people that are mad about batman and everything and i won't get into it in this because of its you know spoilers <laughs> for the game but um I feel like Dude, there's a crazy whole... how people are so crazy. Happy people were to spoil this game. Like people are the biggest whiners about spoilers on literally everything. But I saw every character death in this game before it was like even out of early access. And it's yeah. just bizarre. Even with context though, I think it improves a lot of the, you know, Justice League deaths. It's in the title of the game. But wait. Yeah, it that's gonna happen yeah. in this game yeah Are the you... justice league's <laughs> gonna die and kill the justice league like oh my god wow it, i don't know I, it's weird because like as far as the live service games goes i played a lot of them like i played both division games i played avengers i got to the end game in avengers i played outriders to the end game out of all of those this one feels like the least like uh janky at launch like it feels like they actually took that time that they got with the delay and cleaned up all the technicals and made sure everything will look and run right and have every all like all the loot actually works right the drops are good like it's spread out nicely like as far as a live service game goes i think they kind of nailed the launch except for when it had to be taken down in early access for a few hours but like what what live service game hasn't had to do that i'm not really holding that too much against them and comparing this to avengers this is like night and day a better game mm. it plays better it looks better it runs better the missions don't fall apart and break the ai works they'll revive you it's just like i don't even think it's fair to compare this game at launch to avengers but yeah i think you are onto something there where every video i've seen does not actually get into the live service nature of the game like what how it actually works and they're more focused on saying well i wanted another arkham game and this isn't another arkham game they shouldn't have sent it in the arkham universe and that's fair but like me taking it for what it is i i'm enjoying it i think i don't know i think i'll get to the end game and then put it down and then try out season one and then determine if i'll stick with it but right now i'm just like happily making my way through it with my friends solo is like a little bit of a different story but like with friends it's awesome rich did you pick this up no, no. and what i, about I you, haven't Ross? Been... sorry no nah. no you're good as soon as i heard season one i'm like no that's yeah. too much game for me <laughs> it no looks like service. jimmy is the i can't wait to find out you know in a couple of months if, if you're still playing this game or not um but i'd say it's like 50 50 shot right now it really it really depends yeah. on what they add uh, in in that season one, <clears throat> it's got to be defeating, right? Because like the team of like six made Power World in like two weekends and just like <laughs> yeah. just launched it. Just like yeah, <laughs> we just cobbled together this UE five game. Uh, maybe some people will play it. <laughs> it <was> like <laughs> takes off like gangbusters, and this game Roxanne has been working on for nine years, and people <laughs> just crapping on it. It's just like you just look Dude. at the the two people the just like. Uh, if you compare it to Gotham Knights sales, that game, I I don't ever call games bad, but that game is very, very bad. And it's still <laughs> bad. And that was, like, quietly one of the best-selling games for the year it came out. And then after, like, people just loved buying Gotham Knights. And knowing how much better this is, I'm like, I wish people showed up for this instead. Because mm. mm. this is the one that I'd actually see myself playing. Because I like Suicide Squad. I like that they're violent and there's gore and swearing and stuff i'm like yeah that's cool it makes me think of um anthem you know so like yeah. i think of that you know and uh it just kind of died on the vine just right yep. there in the yeah yeah they should stop I... making these studios transition to live service 
because it, it always ends up bad when these like story developers like make these live service games they get gutted during development and then when the game doesn't take off they get gutted again through yeah. all the new people that they brought on and then we have the husk of bioware making dragon age 4 right now it's just like <laughs> that's it it's a bummer so yeah. i saw this article the other day um it's not in the show notes so you guys can't can't see it but it says that at, at um at gdc i guess they had like this survey and 65 percent of st- that answered this survey 65 percent of studios are presently working on one or more live service game 65 percent it's too much that that um article turned out to be like weird right like they defined live service as we'll update the game after it's released or something like that oh so like cyberpunk Um, right right like any (laughs) like basically any game and i think that we it's possible that we're looking at different articles because the one i saw was like 95 percent. so maybe oh yeah this is gamedeveloper.com okay i'll take a look um but yeah there was one that was like 95 percent, but they were one. defining it as as literally just any game that gets an update basically yeah th- well it says 66 percent of developers conf- confessed that such games are confessed. necessary <laughs> for long-term success it's so mm. negative like they confess that they're working <laughs> Do you just confess? Not enough time. Like, under duress I, I don't yeah. understand why developers don't get that like when you make a game a full-time job like people have to pick one and then you're dividing and dividing and dividing and it's just like there can only be a big like a big enough audience for probably like what two or three of these games at most like when you have diablo right. 4 bombing as hard as it did after launch like that should worry Pretty much every developer working on a live service game right yeah. now. Like if Diablo can't do it and, and Destiny is having these massive problems, like you're probably not gonna have a great shot either. Yeah. And yeah. and Diablo was actually really fun. I enjoyed yeah. my time playing with it. I put like Same. eighty hours into it. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, I like Diablo Four as well. Yeah, it was a really good game, but you're right. It's like it was very flash in the pan. Mm-hmm. And it, it almost feels like there was a time when this kind of game could succeed and oh, i almost feel like that that time is gone it's it is. just there's just too much that's going to pull our attention away from it yeah you know we we've probably had this conversation many times but like the younger generation doesn't play the games that we know about like if i talk to my my kid about diablo he's like oh all right but he has none of the none of the baggage of like you know all the stuff that i played with when i was young and growing up and seeing the success of those games and and seeing how how much they got better and you know between roblox and fortnite and other uh battle royale games just absorbing everyone's time that are free to play it's uh it's really tough it's really tough i can't i can't imagine making a a live service game is is a wise move but i know that they see the numbers and they're like, "Oh, th- those numbers are better than those other numbers, so we need to go for those numbers." And it's, uh, it's a shame. Right. I, it's, I feel it's like, a, go ahead, Rich. I was gonna say it's an expected value thing, right? Like, Epic just going back to taking it to stores, right? Like, Epic Game Store is unlikely to succeed, right? But you take whatever that probability is, point zero 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 one, and you multiply it by 30% of every single game that's sold on PC, like Valve has, and all of a sudden the, the upside is just too good to ignore that you have to try everything you can to make make it succeed. I feel like these, these live service games, uh, many of them fall into, they fall into the trap like my son and I were talking about this because uh, he he actually asked me he's uh, before we started recording he said why does everybody hate the kill the Justice League and I said well I know that I'm going to be talking to somebody about that and I'll find out for you because um, he hasn't played it either but he he was like well you know it's going to have a it, like it has a battle pass right Jimmy yeah it will it's got in battle se- pass and one. microtransactions then why is it seventy dollars. Yeah, that's I hate the thing. That. Like, mm. they would make so much more money if it was just a free game, and then make people pay to play dress up. 
with now they're charging seventy dollars and letting you do that. And Diablo is really egregious with its cash yeah, shop oh, too. Yeah. Like you can spend up to like fifty bucks on armor that only works on one class or whatever. Halo's Jeez. pretty bad too. Like Halo's gotten ridiculous in the past couple of seasons. Like they just added in Halo Wars armor or whatever and the cost that they charge for some of this stuff is wild. It's like the cost of a new game. Yeah, and the Halo, like the the cosmetics in Halo are freaking terrible. Like they don't look cool. They don't look fun. And when I put one of them on, I can't see it. <laughs> it's for <first> person. <laughs> yeah. Bad horse armor. Yeah. 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 Bad horse armor. <laughs> bad yeah. horse. <laughs> bad. Like oh that. my god! Now uh, uh, everybody who loves. Uh, Boy, Russ, you are very blurry. Um, I know it's uh, everybody my, who my loves game is uh, the Bad Horse song. Uh, you guys know exactly what song I'm talking about. Everybody else is like the Bad Horse song. Um, look up Doctor Horrible People. Uh, all right, Rich, what have you been playing, man? I've I've not been playing anything. I've been doing a ton of reviews, so I, like hardware reviews. So I've been unable to really get into anything. Just real quick, I'll plug Bloodhounds on Netflix. I don't know if it's new to Netflix or what, but it's like a mm. it's it's kind of like a K drama, but it's like action. So there's a lot of like fighting and fight scenes and surprisingly the dub is actually really good i i had to use the dub because i'm like washing dishes and stuff like that so i can't like read while i'm watching um anyway yeah like boxing and crime fighting and stuff like that it was actually pretty fun you've been playing anything carrie uh yeah i played um the only thing i played this week was brotato it uh came to game pass <laughs> um so it's like a game like vampire survivors but uh, slightly different um so it, it's i prefer vampire survivors by a long shot but i still was enjoying it and it's like it was i don't know what the like the dopamine hit of how they were doing it because they were like nickel and diming me on achievements and some of the achievements i was getting were like literally one gamer score point and i was like wow. oh, all right <laughs> like let me do that let me do that i got to like beat difficulty level four and then you have to beat it with a bunch of different uh uh, different characters that you can unlock as you play through and it's just it's just fun it's just you know you ha what kind of luck can you have with what type of weapons that you can do either ranged or elemental or whatever and uh it's just a game it's literally just math that you see on a screen and uh the, i just those like grip my brain so i've been i played about like six hours of that or so um and i finished uh power world i stopped playing like last week i got up to like level 40 in Power World, um, but I stopped just because um, I don't know. Just there, there, there needs to be way more in that game um, as it is, and needs to be really patched up. So I'm just gonna walk away from it for a while. I tried playing it again. It's still. I mean, I I, I didn't pay for it. I didn't buy it. I was playing it on my Xbox. It's just a stuttery mess. It's so stuttery. I just can't. It's it's really bad performance wise. Uh, so I just shut it back. Actually, I ended up deleting it. Um, Russ, what have you been playing? Uh, so I, I just reviewed a PC uh, today and this was kind of a beefy PC. And so one of the things I was testing with it is PC VR. Cause I got the Oculus quest or the meta quest three, uh, over Christmas time. And so I've been playing half-life Alex nice. and it is cool. amazing. I bought that game years ago. Like I, it was an investment I made in my steam library <laughs> where I was like, I'm going to get PC VR someday. And so I'm going to play this game, you know, and I watched a little bit of YouTube on it. I was like, can't, I don't want to spoil myself. So it's funny when I started playing it, two things happen. Number one is I, I've never really played any real VR game. You know, I've done like tech demos and stuff. It is so immersive for me. My little monkey brain gets convinced that it's real. When I see a bad guy, I'm like, that is an actual bad human being right there. You know, like it's in the room with me, you know, it freaks my brain out. It's crazy. I, I could never play like a Resident Evil game. Just, oh. just seeing one of the guards in Half-Life Alex freaks me out. Just Dude, seeing them, not even like fighting them. On PSVR 2, Village is still my favorite game. It is terrifying. I, it would, yeah. it, like, I love horror. I don't really get scared of anything. But, like, man, when you're in, like, real first person, I guess, like, crawling through yeah. broken right. rubble and it's just candlelight. And then there's just, like, this guy screaming who's a werewolf at the end of a hallway. It's like, I don't want to yeah. go down there. I don't want to fight him. They take, the like, six shots. I, uh, <laughs> the first thought I, I thought when you were saying that is, like, I... I would have a fear of peeing my pants. Like, <laughs> like that's how like my brain gets convinced of that stuff. So that was the first idea I had. And the second was that uh, I found that 
I, I didn't want to play it that long. And it was because I was worried it was going to end. So I was like, I got to take this one tiny bite at a time. And so I'm like playing it in 10 minutes. I'm like, that's enough. You know, I want to savor these moments, you know. But then I looked and there's like 12 episodes in that game. Like it's a really long game for a VR game. And so I'm just going to start cramming through it. I think I'm going to really enjoy that. So that's what I've been playing. But uh, another thing I kind of wanted to bring up was, you know, Last of Us 2 Remastered came out like a couple weeks ago. We didn't really talk about it, but... All the, the like hype and everything that I saw on Twitter and whatnot were people complaining that it was full price for a remastered game and it's been too soon and all this kind of stuff. I never saw anybody say that it's only $10 to yeah. upgrade from the PS4 version. It's cheap. <laughs> and so I, I saw that and I was like, $10? And so I just bought it this morning because I was like, immediate. Like it was $10, right. played yeah. through it, played through that game because I played, you know, during the pandemic basically and it was just an amazing experience. And so to play that in PS5 kind of mode would be even better. So... That's that's what's on the docket for me, at least. That's the nice. second one, right? That's what's yeah. to you. Okay. I haven't played either of those. <clears throat> Every time we're talking about games, a buddy of mine at work is always like, dude, have you played The Last of Us yet? And I'm like, no, I haven't you yet. You gotta do it. I, I know. I know. Everybody tells me that I gotta so do good. it. And I just, uh, but I just installed it because the first one remastered is on PS uh plus whatever tier i think so i just installed it the other day i just haven't played it yet but mm. i love the show now i'm not now yeah. part of me is like i don't want to play it because i just want to watch the show because i just the like game the show is so much much better um they, yeah. They, yeah they skip over a lot in the show and there's more of the actual like zombies in I, the game yeah. than the show i played um if first game is season one so you're not gonna get yeah, any spoilers yeah. or anything uh, okay i played the first one on the hardest difficulty and it was like the worst decision i could have possibly made not because it was <laughs> difficult <laughs> but uh it was not fun like mm. it, they gave me i get it they don't give me a lot of ammo and i have to do like as best as i possibly can but like i was literally out of ammo and they put me into a room that is closed and I can't do anything. I can't run away because sometimes running away is a viable option. Like making a, a distraction in like grounded mode, like somewhere far off. And then you're like pushing against the door and it's making a bunch of noise. Like that's a viable strategy. You don't have to kill everything, but then sometimes you're in a situation where you run out of ammo. So they know you can't do anything because you have to kill the baddie. So you're running in circles and then bloop, just ammo just appears out of nowhere. And you're like, well, this is stupid, guys. Like, who? <laughs> like, come on. Like, think of something else that I could do using the environment to take this guy out that I don't need ammunition. Like, if you're going to do all this, I don't know. I was, like, really disappointed with, like, people were always telling me it was, like, so amazing. And then I played Last of Us 2, and I enjoyed half of the game. And then the ha second half of the game comes, and it's like, <sighs> I don't really want to do all this over again. So I just stopped doing stealth and I just started running and gunning. And it's just like, it was just, the same. I, I'm so much more of a fan of uncharted for naughty dog than I am for the mm. last of us uncharted. The uncharted series. I absolutely love by naughty dog by a long shot over the last of us. Last of us is good. It's just that it's too long. The game could have been way shorter, tighten that thing up. And it would have been, it would have been much better. Everybody yeah, I talked really to says game. it's a really short game. It's like 20 hours, 22 hours. They're, the thing is that it's like an intense game. And so it's yeah, exhausting it yeah. to play yeah, that game. Is. Like I can yeah. only do a room at a time. I never finished Last of Us Part 1. It was just too much for me. I ended up watching someone else finish it on YouTube because I wanted to see what happened. But I was just done. Like it was just too much. And it was too difficult for me too. I'm, I, I mentioned before, but I don't like like upgrading my weapons or trying out new weapons. I just want a one good solid weapon, good bow and arrow or whatever. And just let me use that. I love you the know? bow and, and so Once I got the bow and arrow yeah. in Last of Us 2, I was like this... Like that was like opened up the game a bunch for me because it was like it followed the whole stealth and survival stuff, but I don't know. Yeah. It's just I don't know. It's it's that it's game a good has game. it has the best weapon countering what you're saying about weapon upgrades. It has <laughs> the best animations for weapon upgrades oh, yeah. ever. They're they're oh, not yeah. accurate at all. Like right. like when Joel's like doing the like corkscrew rifling and stuff he like wipes right. it with a rag but just like the gun porn in that game is crazy when you're upgrading <laughs> yeah. weapons and then so the thing i, I was going to yeah. say i'm sorry i was going to just okay. mention the uh the amazing part about last of us part two that i wanted to just kind of focus on and then I'll, I'll be done is just that the accessibility options in that game make yeah. the game so much more enjoyable you because you can basically tailor it 
Yeah, exactly. Slow down mode. You can make it infinitely long. You can make the bad guys highlight in a like easy to see color. Like yeah. if you're having issues seeing them and stuff like that. And so that made the game for me. And I that's probably one of the main reasons why I enjoyed it so much is because I was able to tailor it to my specific needs where I couldn't do that with the first one. And so it, it removed a lot of that stress for me. And again, you know, I, I'm one of those guys where just I get too into a game sometimes it gets overwhelming. And so that was like the perfect balance of challenging but not being too much. And so that's why I really left about it. Yeah, what you just said reminded me of like a moment in time where I just was so frustrated at The Last of Us 1. Again, because I'm playing on the hardest difficulty, like things are just like ramped up. So I'm in the uh, like apartment complex or something and I'm trying to get around so I'm like tiptoeing around going all slow and I like bump into a bottle and it breaks and a guy from like two floors above is like what <laughs> and I'm like come on like he's not gonna hear that two floors up like I'm pretty sure that was like a complete like not thing that was supposed to happen but having it happen was just like because like people were always like oh it's so real it's like they can only hear and it's like I had the opposite experience. It was just like this is this is no good. It's uh, like uh, Cloud trying to get out of Aerith's house without knocking stuff over with that stupid Buster right. sword. Yep. <laughs> yeah. she kept going, oh, what are you doing up? It's time to go to sleep. Right. Go Let's back go to your room. sleep. Right. I'll go back to your room. Exactly. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, maybe someday I'll try out The Last of Us. I've got it installed, so I guess I don't really have many excuses. Um, <laughs> the game that I've been playing is Tekken Eight. Nice. And I have never played a Tekken game. Really? Except for the first one, I was at a I was at like a party uh when I was in the army, I was at a uh, like a barracks party and somebody had their door open and they were playing they were playing Tekken 1 on the PlayStation and I went in and I played a couple rounds and I was like, "Okay, that's cool." And I never picked it up and I never played any of the other Tekken games and I don't know what possessed me to pick up this one. Uh, but I ended up picking it up, and I finished story mode uh, this morning, although I skipped through all of the cutscenes because they are anime as hell, and I just couldn't... <laughs> I was, like, totally not interested. So, wait, why'd you skip them? I didn't... I didn't because follow. I just... Oh, <laughs> it's just not interesting to me. Like, these guys screaming at each other, like, I will use this kind of fighting style. And, like, I was like, why are you guys saying, like, it's so weird? I thought you didn't use this fighting style. Well, now I don't hesitate. Sure, okay, whatever, skip. Um, I just want to beat people up. Um, I was worried that it was going to be uh, too hard to enjoy because I haven't had any experience with the with the other ones. Um, but they have, like, a baby's first Tekken controls in it. Mm -hmm. where it basically it kind of simplifies the controls kind of like Street Fighter 6 did where you have like the, you can hit the LB button whenever you want and when you do it brings up like little combos on the left hand side and you're like if you if you want to do an air combo press Y three times if you want to do your special attack push X if you want to do like your heat move you press the right button and that's like it's all just simple inputs and then if i hit the L, the left bu bumper again that goes away and the four face buttons correspond to the four limbs of the fighters so it's like your left hand your right hand right. your left leg your right leg and i i was trying to force myself to use you know the real mode but then I turned on the the other mode and I hopped into ranked matches and I was I was winning about half the matches that I was in and it was really really fun. I like that game a lot. It's cool. Has Me? anybody played it? I no, so I want to play Tekken 8. I'm a huge Tekken fan and I just want to quickly just give this little anecdote story because it was uh how I started like loving Tekken. So Tekken 1 and 2 I played and I liked but I wasn't super huge into it. And Tekken 3 I was also just playing it just because it's a fighting game and I want to play it. I was at a local import shop in my in my city, uh, and when I was there, uh, there was a dude that was playing as king, and then he started doing his like you know numerous throws and one after the other, and seeing it keep on going, I thought it was like a literal like glitch, like how it almost like <laughs> like he was like crack, crack, and he's just going around I'm like it keeps going, and I feel like <laughs> that one really sold me on t uh, like. King in Tekken 3 really sold me on Tekken 3 in general. I love... Te Tekken 3 is still one of my favorite, 
favorite Tekkens. Uh, and Tekken 3 was the moment, though, right? Like, yeah. That was when everybody, because, like, it also had, like, Tekken Ball and Tekken Man. And it yeah. had, like, a beat-em-up kind of style. Yeah. So, like, everybody was into it. And then it just, it, it really nailed the, the actual mechanics by that point. Yeah. W- did, was Eddie in 3 or was that Tekken Tag? Eddie. That was the other thing. Eddie, uh, that's the. Um, the yeah. The, uh, pa- uh, capoeira. Capoeira, yeah. Uh, yeah. I believe I think he was he in is. three. He's in yeah. Tekken three. Yeah, he is. yeah, yeah. So I, t- everything came together in Tekken three because uh, you you were talking about baby mode, Bill, but like Eddie was the guy where he, if you knew nothing about the game, <laughs> yeah. you could just mash on <laughs> yeah. the buttons. And he, yeah, very drunken fighter style, but capoeira. So he's just moving around, and it was very hard to play someone that's button mashing with uh, against Eddie. Yeah. You know, I'm I'm cracking myself up for two reasons. Number one is you guys are talking like King is awesome in Tekken 3. And he was, like, (laughs) moves-wise. But if you look at him now, it's the stupidest costume a character has ever had in a fighting game. He's he's wearing, like, sweatpants and sketchers. We're not not friends anymore. No, there's no way. (laughs) You're not going to trash King. (laughs) The other thing I'm laughing about is that, like, Bill... You know, 25 years ago, saw this game. Like, that's great. I'll see you in 25 years. (laughs) Out of that happen? (laughs) I don't know. It just it it kind of like I saw some some. I don't even know. I I saw something and I was watching. I was like, oh, that looks cool. And then I was, I was just sitting and I was looking at my on my Xbox and I was looking. I was just opened up the store and I was just kind of scrolling through the store because I was looking for something to play. And I was like, well, I mean, no, I don't need this. And so I, I closed it. And like two days later, I was like, yeah, I'm buying that. And I ended up picking it up. And it's really, really fun. And actually, the, the, the main reason that I ended up picking it up is because it's a good, uh, what the hell is happening? Oh, okay. That's King. <laughs> That's King. No, look yes. at King and Tekken three though. That's, yeah, that's okay. I just looked right, it up. Right, it's right. so funny. All right. Um, so for the audio listeners, man. Rich just threw a picture of a tiger-headed man or a leopard-headed man up on the screen. <laughs> um, I it's a good game to sit down with my son and we could sit next to each other and talk some smack and mm. you nice. know beat each other up. And that that's another like Street Fighter six was one of those. And, like, I've never really been a fighting game guy, except for Smash Brothers. So I feel like I'm, you know, I ended up picking up Street Fighter last year, and, and this year I picked up Tekken. And uh, I'm really, really enjoying it. And uh, I suck at it. But that's okay, because, <laughs> you know, the ranked mode is good. It keeps putting me up against people who also suck at it. And so I win about half the matches, and that's nice. that's really all I wanted. Uh, so really quickly, this is actually an actual factual story that ha- has happened. Uh, be- I was so into Tekken three, but I was always playing with a PlayStation controller uh, that I never played on an arcade stick with the four buttons. So it always was like at a disadvantage whenever I played an arcade. I actually played Tekken three at an arcade, and uh, it was in Las Vegas. And however many years ago that's was like nine, mid mid nineties, I'm in Las Vegas playing an arcade, playing Tekken three. This Korean girl comes up to me, she plays me. I barely beat her. And I was like, okay, well, that was whatever. And I'm going back in the thing. Then her boyfriend comes and plays me and barely beats me. And then they, like, looked at me, like, hard, like, yeah, what? And I was like, what the hell just happened? (laughs) I just walked away. I was like, what the hell? Did he just protect her honor or something? (laughs) He's playing video games. I didn't think anything of it. But they were like, it was a weird, weird situation. (laughs) <laughs> I would really like the ability to communicate with the person that I'm playing against because I played with, I don't know who, um, I had them down to no health. And they came back. I was full health. They came back and they wrecked me, right? And I wanted to send, the, I wanted to just send them a, you know, GG. And I wish that the game had some way for me to Quit just it. send yeah. them a message when I was done because mm. I was like, that was really cool. Uh, and and uh, visually, this game is stunning. There's like I think my favorite uh, level. You are on this big rock area, and in the background, you can see like giant waves going by, and there's tornadoes in the background, and it is just it is gorgeous. It's an absolutely gorgeous game, and I'm just having a blast with it. But uh, I'll I'll end up keep playing it. I finished the the story mode. There's a weird mode. In the middle of the story mode, it turns into like a 3D brawler. Like oh, where weird. you've got like 
waves of enemies coming at you? And I was like, what the hell is this? Is that a staple for the series or was that something new? They always had different types of mini games um, of oh, various okay. sorts in Tekken. I want to say that a brawler sounds very familiar to me. Um, yeah, they had a brawler in Tekken Three. Yeah, I don't. I don't think they kept up with that, right? Like they, they. This is probably the first time since PS One, PS Two days that they have one of those modes. <laughs> you know, it's at like the pitch meeting. Like they go up to the whiteboard and you see Tekken Three there, and then the guys like. And he just finishes the threes and just connects them to an eight. <laughs> like, and everyone just starts clapping. Like, <laughs> I will say that I didn't like the brawler mode. I found it to be irritating. But hmm. I also hmm. didn't like yeah. a lot of the other stuff. But the the moment to moment combat of just getting in and doing a ranked match with somebody, thumbs up from me. Um, all right, let's move on back to the news. And w- real quick, I just sorry, yeah. I just found the headline that says Tekken 8 is the sequel to Tekken 3 we've always needed. So Carrie, Carrie <laughs> nice. nailed it. Yeah. Nice. I mean, I there haven't played go. it, but it's sounding more and more just like it because mm-hmm. I love 3. I played the hell out of 3. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, it, 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 is a, it is a really good game. I'm really enjoying it. And now I don't have to play Tekken 3. I can just play Tekken 8. And There you uh, go. Uh, it has cross-play, so if you guys end up picking it up on whatever platform, we can fight each other and... Uh, uh, everybody can beat the hell out of me as I, you know, I've been using some dude with a gun and a knife and I like him a lot, but I don't know his name or anybody's name. Cause there's just so, so many characters in this game and I don't feel like I have to unlock anybody either. Like I haven't unlocked a single character. I think I just have the whole roster Nice from the That's beginning, awesome. which is yeah. very strange to me. <laughs> All right, let's, uh, let's, uh, move on. And, uh, you know what? Let's do we want okay. Uh Jimmy. PS yes. Vita two. Go. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> I did a whole video on this already. I know. It was really, really I watched exciting. It. it was news. a good video. Quick history. Uh my beginnings of games video slash writing was running a Vita website basically like back in college. I was the big Vita guy. I was ride or die for that thing. I had like Pretty much, I probably had about sixty percent of the library before they stopped doing physicals, and then went to all digital. And there was like fifteen million ease games coming out and whatever. And that's when I bounced off. But like, <laughs> I was a big Vita guy. Loved everything from like Golden Abyss all the way down to like Killzone Mercenaries. So when I saw this news from what's his name, uh, Moore's, Moore's Law is dead. dead. I was very excited because I was extremely disappointed when I saw those headlines last year where it was like, Sony's making a new handheld, and then you click on it, and it's like, it'll stream from your PS5. I was like, no. (laughs) So what they're doing is basically, if this is true, which it might be, might not be, the philosophy here is like building something that'll come out towards the tail end of the PS5 generation and be geared towards PS5 and PS4 games to run them down clocked, obviously. Uh, It'll have the DualSense features, which I think is great. I just want Sony to re-enter the hardware game because I feel like now is about the time where they could actually nail it because instead of making their developers split off and make, you know, handheld style games out of their biggest IP, they could just make a handheld that'll run the games their developers are already working on, <laughs> which is what Nintendo's done, which is kind of what Valve's got going on with the Steam Deck. I I'm very excited about this even being a possibility because if they can not if they can manage to avoid making it use a pr- proprietary memory card that's expensive as hell and like <laughs> you know just all the mistakes that they make with the, like their handhelds I think they could finally nail it because they have so much market share at this point and people are obviously interested in playing PlayStation games on a handheld right with the portal selling so well so yeah yeah I think this could be really cool I. I, I, I want to stay away from whether or not this is true or not. Just to assume it's true and talk right. about like what what is it that we want from this. I, I feel like, because uh, I made a video about it too, I feel like the reason that Sony would do this, the reason it makes sense, is because obviously it doesn't take discs. So that pushes digital sales. Because if I'm yeah, 100%. sitting down and, and making a decision about whether or not I'm going to buy you know, the next Spider-Man game or the next uh, Horizon Zero, whatever. Uh, you know, if I'm making a decision on a physical copy or a digital copy, Sony benefits more from me buying a digital copy. But if I buy that digital copy, I have the ability to play it on both of those systems. Whereas if I buy the physical copy, I'm locked out of the digital system. So yeah. I feel like that's 
a good reason why they would do this. It was Whether so or not great. they end up doing it is another thing. What'd you say? During PS3 generation, it was awesome because they were still like having mo- more people buy games physically. So a lot of the first party games, they would you would get the PS3 disc and then it would come with a digital code that unlocked the Vita version and the PS3 version. So for me in college, like I could buy a game like PlayStation All-Stars and then when I was done with it, I didn't have to feel guilty trading in the disc because I still had that digital copy. But you're right, there's no way they'll do that now because they could encourage both <laughs> digital sales and PS Plus Extra subscriptions. Because you could just download the games off that. I tried pitching that to some indie developers, uh, where if you bought a um, a Switch game, it would have a Steam code in it, so you can get the you can get the PC version as well. And they're like, "No way!" <laughs> like, all right, well, I thought it was good. <laughs> <laughs> it was I, cool. I always did. thought it would be cool if if uh, Amiibos were the the game, hmm. like you could buy an Amiibo. And then yeah, you would sweet. tap it and it would unlock and then erase like whatever was on it. So then you would have the, you could have like this little statue and you wouldn't have to carry like a bag with 400 cartridges. I actually really with you. like the Amiibos. I'm a big fan of Amiibos. I think they're cool. Look, I like, yeah. well, I, I like them for their, like for the characters that I care about. Yeah, exactly. But there right. were, there, there were a lot of these toys to life things that were just really oh, dumb yeah but the, mm-hmm. the, the amiibo quality of the little statuettes they're really nice like just to like appreciate them like i'll be walking mm-hmm. by and they're on my shelf and stuff and i'll just like look at them like man that's really well done you just like look at the craft craftsmanship of it and it's um they're really nice i really appreciate them that's cool rich what Did do you they- think of the vita 2 I think the weird thing for me is that it's coming late in the ps5 cycle right i mean like that just that just probably is what what makes sense at this point but like for us to potentially be on the cusp by the time this releases be on the cusp of the ps6 um i feel will sort of undercut the advantage that sony has in coming out with their own handheld which is day and date releases for their new games right playing those in handheld because if you're just if i'm just going to play my back catalog of ps5 and ps4 games outside of bloodborne me personally i'd rather just do that on the pc handheld so that that's my concern or like like that's the point that makes this weird to me especially this report the way it's framed makes this weird to me um it may just be that this is what they're testing for now and though but i think i think coming out with this at ps6 alongside ps6 and it is a handheld version of ps6 i think makes a lot more sense to me that'd be perfect and also uh we've seen all those rumors where they're like with Helldivers 2 you have to sign in allegedly with your playstation account because it's Mm going to save transfer back and forth and then from all those like uh you know investor talks and everything lately they've been making it sound like they're going to push that more where you have to log in with your psn and then your save will transfer back and forth like yeah if that's the case I mean, I'm always ride or die Steam Deck at that point. Like, I will buy a PS5 copy and a PC copy just so I can take the PC version on the go and have all my stuff transferred. That's where I'd really like to get with PlayStation stuff because having the two copies of the game is cool, but, like, having two copies and my stuff transfers so I don't have to replay God of War 2018 when it comes out or The Last of Us Part 1, like, that's the ideal situation. That would be amazing. Like Russ, you wanted to talk about the flip. Yeah, uh, so I just got an email yesterday from INEO. They're sending me one. Uh, they said, they said, unfortunately, it's the black one, which means that it's going to be smudgy. Because that's always my complaint <laughs> about all the black INEO handhelds. It's like, it's smudgy, you know? And so they try they to send me the white ones now. They should always send you the I white think. ones. Yeah. <laughs> so just know. They, the fact that they put that in there, I'm like, oh, you actually watch my videos. That's cool. But uh, I'm interested about this one. Like for for one, you know, it's got the two screen setup, and the second screen is smaller and it's lower res. I think it's like 480p or something like that. But uh, you know, a lot of people are immediately thinking, oh, 3ds, right? And the Citra emulator on Windows does have the ability to have two windows, so you can just kind of resize them so they fit perfectly within there, make them both full screen, and it should work fine. And then also the Wii U emulator does the same thing. It has uh, Citra or Simu, Simu has the ability to have two screens as well. Not a lot of games take advantage of that, but like Wind Waker HD does. Like you can see the menu while you're playing the game. And so things like that will be pretty cool. Uh, There is no DS emulator that does a two window setup. You have to split one window across the two. It's probably still going to be doable. Um, 
considering this is probably just going to treat it like two separate windows windows you know like you would have two monitors set up and so you can definitely do that it's just going to take some finagling to do we'll see i i've gotten a lot more interest in this one uh when i tweeted about it as opposed to bo- most any other <laughs> ineo device and so that's a good sign i think this is exactly we've talked about it before i'm getting out of focus again i don't know what's up with my focus hello i think it's it wants to see daytona usa <laughs> yeah that's it um <laughs> let's so, go away uh, Right. <laughs> so uh, I think that this is exactly what we've talked about before. INEU needs to innovate, like put put out something that's not just a different Steam Deck that's more expensive. And so yep. uh, they're doing that. That's yep. great. So these sticks yeah. look terrible to me. Oh, yeah. There's going to be Switch style <laughs> sticks. Can you put it yeah. up on the screen? I'm, I am trying right now. Um, so they're recessed, <laughs> like really deep recesses. Uh, mm-hmm. And I'm like... <laughs> The GPD win is the same way too. Yeah. Yeah. How is that? Yeah. Do you have that? I, I don't like it. I'm not a fan, but Carrie, okay. are you a fan of the recessed analogs? I am. Yeah. Big fan of them. Yeah. Yeah. And they're they're fine. I yeah. When when the GPD win max when I had that before the Steam Deck, I got used to it. But now that I have like full full fledged controllers, uh, yeah. Going back to this, it, it feels like a step backwards to me. But also, I don't know how you do clamshell like real clamshell without doing that yeah. so i love right. the top screen but the little yeah. the, the bottom screen looks a little small the reality yeah, is people yeah. are like oh we could watch youtube videos while playing a game yeah. you know things like that <laughs> like the subway surfers <laughs> down there like uh i know right <laughs> i neo 2 is um like probably the best analog sticks that i've used um mm-hmm. it, just because those are full fat analog sticks um yeah. and those are fantastic but they're the height of them is just fantastically large much like how the Steam Deck analog sticks are. And if you want like really right. good analog sticks, you need a lot of height. So if you're doing a clamshell design, you're really limited with how much height you can actually get in there. So you have Very like much. 20 millimeters. Having said that, the one the ones that are on the GPD Win Max or the GPD Win Mini, for the sacrifices inside of that space, I still I still love them. Yeah, the way I describe them is that they are flicky. Like it yeah. doesn't feel like a full range of motion. You just kind of flick them yeah, to get gotcha. to where you need to, and you get used to it. But it's yeah, it's not ideal for me, and it's always a complaint that I have when I make these reviews. So I'm sure it's going to be the same there. There's some controllers out there that have like uh, the sticks that attach magnetically, where mm. like you kind of put them down and they snap on. And I, yeah, that's a I, good idea. I would love it if they would have the recesses, but then have a full tall stick with a good deep throw that i could just open it up and go and then be off to the races with it being way more comfortable and then when i was done dji controller does that for yeah i think that would be cool yeah i brought that up in one of my reviews i think it was the gpd win mini it's like you know find a slot where they'll magnetically go in on the side and then you can pull them out and then put them on you know that'd be awesome I mean, people would like lose them, idea. and then they could charge you for replacements. <laughs> That's like the three modules on the DualSense Edge, like that they charge twenty dollars for. It's like, oh yeah, if our hardware ever fails, you can just pay more to fix it. It's like <laughs> great solution. That's the most Sony solution of all time. <laughs> right. <laughs> One thing I'm worried about with the Flip DS, and you know, it's going to be the the main thing I'm testing for, is with that like DS or rather 3DS uh, Wii U emulation is well specifically 3DS, right? Like stuff like um pacross right like i i i'm able to hold the the 3ds in one hand and you know move my pointer with the other hand and so like is the flip ds going to be comfortable to hold with one hand in that way because it's you know it's it's like it's got to be hundreds of grams heavier than a 3ds right so that that's going to be interesting for me if you're playing a 3ds if you want to play 3ds games i just say get a 3ds like (laughs) <laughs> They're very easy to or just a quest three if that's yeah. if that's what you want to do. Yeah, I would love that too. Um, uh, they're they're very easy to 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 put that custom software on, and yeah, then you're you're done. And and it has three D. Like this doesn't yeah. have three D, right? No. And, no. and you're right. There's still no better way to play Pacross specifically than on the three DS, right? Like. There, I, I've tried on everything. There's nothing better than just playing it on the original <laughs> yeah, hardware. You know, they were still using resistive screens, so resistive screens with the stylus just mm-hmm. uh, are way different than capacitive screens. Mm-hmm. So uh, just the feelings is way different. I'm, I'm still waiting same... for Russ to put out his video of the 3DS on the on the MetaQuest 3. 
Because yeah, that, that looks amazing. I think I'm going to do a dedicated like emulation video on the Quest. Oh, At first, sick. I was going to do like full tutorials, but I think I'm just going to do here's how to emulate NES yeah, and PSP and that's... all that kind of stuff. Because there are some proprietary like apps that work with the Quest, like PSP One, for example. You know, another thing is that I have a Surface 2 Duo. It's like their phone that's like a flip screen or whatever. That thing is amazing for 3DS. And yeah. I bought one for like $600. I was going to make a video on it. And then I realized like they're just not that Daytona thing's Daytona. happening. Daytona. And so uh, I realized that they're not making them anymore. And they're now super expensive. They're like $900 if you want to get one. And I cannot tell people, hey, here's a $900 3DS, you're going to love it. Like, it just it doesn't make any sense to me. And so I still have the thing, and it's amazing. I needed to make a video about it, but uh, yeah, it's just, man, this autofocus kill me. Well, now and they so, have the, yeah. now they have the JSOCs, right? Like the Flipgo, like those <laughs> seem, I haven't, I right. don't have it, so full disclosure. But that seems interesting for something like that, for 3DS emulation. So yeah. that could be an option that's not $900. Yeah, I've and never... the DeckMate people have made a Sorry. new phone adapter now, and so it can go underneath your screen. So you can put a Ooh. phone there, have it with your oh, Steam Deck, and then you can wirelessly have that attached as your second uh, monitor with 3DS. And so you could do something like that as well. How oh, is cool. 3DS performance on the Steam Deck? That's like the one console I haven't tried to emulate. It's pretty good. I mean, there are the Citra emulator can't play every game, like Luigi's Mansion, Correct. Dark Moon, or whatever. Just yeah. doesn't work yeah. for most of these emulators, you know, or for most of the builds of that emulator, and so. But overall, yeah, it's 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 fine. You can cool. you can get usually a two X resolution in most three DS games. Sweet. I really enjoyed playing. Um, what's the sequel to A Link to the Past? A Link Between Worlds. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I really enjoyed playing that. I, I put it on my Steam Deck, and I used the um, the glasses. Um, X reels, uh, the X reel glasses, and I used those as my second monitor. And I it was actually in three D, so I had a giant three oh, wow. D screen and cool. then i had my steam deck had like the bottom screen that was a really cool experience and it's something that like the only other really cool way to do that would be if for russ to make his video about the about the quest 3 there's a lot of people or, saying or, or, or we can spend 3500 dollars on uh, apple whatever now. right yeah. there's a lot of people oh uh, saying that the super switch is going to have that feature 3d X reel well, glasses. X, X reels, yeah, for your main display. Gotcha. Yeah, so you'd have the DS like type of functionality, and you could fall back to switch on the main handheld. But uh, it's just cool. <laughs> All I could think of is the Splatoon, uh, like the the the. In order to do the communication with your phone, they had that stupid squid shaped <clears throat> thing that you would hook up your headset oh, yeah, to, so yeah. that you could talk. <laughs> like I imagine, if Nintendo put out a pair of glasses, they would be like. It's a Super Mario hat, and like little gla gla glasses pop down over the top, so that everybody will look like a moron. <laughs> yeah, but you know, like Nintendo would do those like Nintendo things. They're like, you know, look to your right, and because they'd be spatial glasses, you can like look to your right, and the screen would stay over there, and you're like, oh, it's right there. And then they would just do and then something. They would say, how about take? How about you take a break? <laughs> yeah, hundred yeah. <laughs> percent. Um, so I know Jimmy, you have to go in like ten minutes, so we got to go yep. fast. Um. PlayStation uh, had their big state of play. Um, what was the stuff that jumped out to you as, holy cow, that looks awesome? Death Stranding 2. I don't know why I wasn't excited about it. I, For some reason, I just thought it didn't need a sequel. And then now that I see what he's doing with it, I'm like, okay, you've justified this. And just Troy Baker coming back as Higgs is just so cool. Uh, Silent Hill 2 just cracks me up because, like... You, Silent Hill, the fan base, is, like, one of the biggest fan bases for games they've obviously, like, very obviously never played. Because the biggest hate that I saw for the Silent Hill 2 trailer was, like, why is there combat? There's no combat in Silent Hill 2. And I'm like, I play that game annually. That game is one of the most combat-heavy games of all time. And, like, the combat doesn't look great, I will say, in a lot of the graphical performance. Just, like, it doesn't look awesome. It's very blooper team. But, like... It looked better than Silent Hill 2 because the bar is on the floor when you're talking about that game. Like, that is in the running for the worst combat of all time, the original. And uh, it was a good showing. It just sucked that everything leaked from it, so it just kind of deflated it for me a little bit. But if you wanted to pack a lot of games in 40 minutes, I don't think they could have done much better. You know, it's like I'm calling into question a little bit their end of the year release strategy because we don't know anything after, like, the first half of 2024 for Sony. But... 
you know, if they have an off year, so be it. There's a lot of stuff to play out there. I'm still catching up on things from 2023, and I I can find things to play in the meantime. But I think it was a good state of play. I'm more interested in showcases from them, obviously, because that's where they really kind of blow the doors off, and one Mm -hmm. of those should be coming up soon. Ross, did anything jump out at you as uh, as cool from the, from that? Uh, I'm always waiting for Judas. Like I've been waiting yes. forever for that game, and yes. so uh, looking forward to that. I didn't watch the trailer. I just saw, oh yeah, there's an update, so it's still coming. Thank goodness, that was it. And so that's all I have going for it with that. It's just that I I, I don't want to be spoiled or anything, but I'm very much so looking forward to Felt that. Just very because Bioshock. you know Bioshock. Yeah, so surprise. That's, that's a good surprise. Thing. Good, good, good. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Uh, what about you, Rich? Anything jump out at you from from the state of play? Yeah, absolutely. Death Stranding too, and I didn't get to watch it like you know as it came out, so I, I kind of just had the trick the trailers trickle by throughout the week. But like Death Stranding two is like Kojima like back on his bullshit, right? Mm-hmm. Like, like he <laughs> like swords, the, right? <laughs> like lightning swords shooting, lightning shooting the out guitar. of the guitar. <laughs> like what? What is going on? And it's just the best and. You know, like Death Stranding, it it started off a little lukewarm, I think, in terms of reception. Like the the on like the critical reception was really good, but I felt like the audience didn't pick up to it like they did with the Metal Gear Solid games. And I feel like Death Stranding Two is going to bring all of those Metal Gear Solid folks back to to Kojima. I really like the the hands, the lady who had like the the hands around her neck that that would like wipe things off her face or give a thumbs up yep. or wave or you know that was that was weird and cool that was I, a... i'm not a kojima guy i just don't <laughs> i don't care but that you was gotta cool play looking. metal gear you'll you'll that design have, jimmy have you played metal gear rising yes i love metal so that, gear rising. I, I was gonna say that design the hands yeah. like that's from metal gear rising so like, yeah, yeah it's a little bit of an evolution on the weird mechs in metal gear solid 4 that had human legs <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> they're super yeah. weird. That they made weird. cow noises. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> and you guys are telling me to play this game. Yes, <laughs> dude. I'm like not an anime I guy at all, like. and I love it. It's it, it's. I mean, it pulls from so many great movies, like Die Hard with a Vengeance and Escape from New York. It's like it's really hard not to re- like it, even if you're yeah. not into the more like crazy aspects of it. Yeah. If, right. if you don't try anything else, maybe try Metal Gear Rising because it's action. Yeah. So, like, it's, right it's so hard cool. not to like. I yeah, have Metal right. Gear He's Solid amazing. on my MiU Mini Plus waiting for me. So There you go. That's another Hell one. Yeah. You'll be yeah. fine. Uh, Carrie, <laughs> anything jump out at you from the PlayStation thing? You're not a uh, PlayStation yeah, guy. Yeah, uh, two things. So the PSVR <laughs> uh, game that they had, that Dungeons & Dragons type of game that was kind of like deep down-ish. Um, uh, <laughs> d- starts with a D. D- yeah. Demos? Uh, I forget the name of it. It just looked... I saw it briefly, and I was like, oh, that VR game looks kind of cool, and it's probably only ever going to come out on PSVR 2, so it's like the only actual exclusives they'll have. So I guess that's something I'm looking forward to. Everything else is like, you know, it's all coming to PC, and it's weird that, like, Sony is, like, very careful with their messaging, and it's like, we have to talk about our PC games that are coming out. What's one that's coming out? Uh, There's about seven. Let's mention Until Dawn. (laughs) <laughs> like, so weird. <laughs> <laughs> all right, <laughs> and we're gonna mention the seven other ones. No, 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 no. Well, Don't do that. Why the, why the caveat? Why, why even like for you specifically? Uh, like, what does that mean to you that it's coming to PC? Because I mean, all the Xbox games come to PC, right? So, right. Is that are you? It sounds like you're saying that's a bad thing. But I assume you don't actually feel that way. No, I want them to come out with PC. I just want them to it be as they're they're. They're trying to have their cake and eat it too. They're trying not to upset their fan base, but also trying to come out with it. And it's just like, guys, you're doing it. All of these games are coming out. Just let us know. Because, you know, like just kind of having it in the air. Also, not for nothing, when they don't do this and if sales aren't very good and you didn't really talk about it, who's to blame other than yourself? So Yeah, their marketing is terrible on that. Yeah, so it's like... It's kind of the same thing of like uh, the Xperia Play, right? The Xperia Play should have been labeled the PlayStation phone. They didn't label it the PlayStation phone because all the Sony cabal inside were like, no, 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 we don't want this to be the PlayStation phone. They didn't have any marketing for it. They torpedoed the goddamn thing. It went away and died. There was no Xperia Play 2 (laughs) because they wanted it to die. So I don't know. I almost get a feeling like there is this force that are making PC ports of PlayStation games. And then at the same time, they don't want to also talk about it. So it's... I don't know. I've seen it happen before, and who knows? 
Those of you who are playing the game at home, I, I think that counts as Carrie mentioning a gaming <laughs> phone so you can take a drink. <laughs> uh, so Metro Awakening VR, I think, looks really cool. Yeah. But I've learned from trying Resident Evil 7 VR and Resident Evil 8 VR and Resident Evil 4 VR that it's too <clears throat> freaking scary. And so I'm not going to play them. Like it is scary. I'll load it up. I'll walk 15 feet. I'll be like, yeah. "This is too scary," and I'll take it off. Yeah. Once once you get <laughs> like get that's that type of stuff is like very intense. Like amnesia was like my breaking point for me. Like the when you design a game so well that you have to like look into a wall so that you don't go crazy in the game. Like as a game mechanic, you are forced to like hide into like a little side thing and hope the thing that's coming behind you doesn't like grab you. That is a uh, that's a a really a great game mechanic to amplify anxiety. <laughs> I did see one game. I don't know what it's called. It, it was, it's on PSVR uh, 2 um, where it watches your eyes. And if you blink, then the, the monsters move. Oh, so it's like, oh, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So there's like so, the, like Doctor Who. Right. Yeah. The Doctor <laughs> Who episode where they get the angels yeah. to uh, look at him, uh, look at each other. And then they just box. Them yeah. Up. But that's yeah, a, that's, very, very, that's a frightening concept. To like blink your eyes yeah. and see, because they move so outrageously fast that it's mm -hmm. like, <laughs> you're like, oh no, <laughs> and blink, <laughs> blink one eye at a time. <laughs> uh, so I guess then the last thing that we would talk about, uh, that Russ, you wanted to talk about the B Link contest to win some money. I'm gonna, I gotta head out, I gotta go see a movie. Uh, so I gotta go. What movie? Enjoy. Oh, okay. Uh, Argyle. I heard oh. it's oh, mediocre, nice. but we just wanted to go see about movie. it. Enjoy, man. Have so. fun, man. <laughs> All right. See you guys. Yep, see you later. Man. See ya. Bye. All right. So, Russ, you wanted to talk about this, this B-Link contest. Yeah. So, B-Link is a mini PC manufacturer. They're one of my favorites between them and, like, Mini's Forum, usually. Uh, so, they sent me an email last night, and they've got this website where, basically, they are looking to design a new mini PC with, a like, a desktop GPU. And they want to try to figure out some sort of... Uh, solution to this and so I don't know maybe they just ran out of ideas but they're like how about we ask people to come up with the ideas and designs and stuff and if we use your design we'll pay you ten thousand dollars basically and so I thought it was just a really kind of apropos thing for our podcast because we're always talking about how these guys should be making things better you know what I mean like here's our opportunity and Carrie has been spending hours already <laughs> making a design so uh, so that's kind of one of the things I wanted to bring up is just kind of it's neat and I'll, I'm gonna post it on Twitter later on today but basically I like this idea, you know, like they're saying, hey, we'll actually listen to you as opposed to assuming what you want. Let me hear what you have to say, and we're going to reward you for it. Because it's not just the $10,000 thing. If you come up with other ideas that they also use, maybe not the exact full thing, they'll give you like a coupon and all this other kind of stuff, prizes and whatnot. So That's I like really that they're neat. doing that. Makes me think of the Homer Simpson car. <laughs> so it, for, yeah, cool. they'll get some bad ideas. Rich, yeah. you don't know what about the Homer Simpson mm -mm, car? Really? Oh, no. so you you should just Google Homer Simpson car. It's it's great. It's from an episode of The Simpsons, and I think it 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 will ex it will explain exactly <laughs> what I mean. <laughs> I've seen um, pictures now. Okay. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> yep. Yep. Uh, so I think we're gonna see some really strange designs, but you know what? Maybe somebody will come up with something cool. Yeah, it might just spark something in the engineer and be like, oh, that's a direction I hadn't thought of, and this is what I needed in order to make the perfect yeah. thing or whatever. I would love, a, a, you know, if like Ambernick or somebody did this as well, like, because I got some ideas, you know, but um, yeah, I like that idea. Yeah, yeah. I that, think that we'll also see if things Carrie that are. Wins. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. What'd you say, Rich? I just said it would be sick if Carrie wins. That would be amazing. And we would I have told... a special episode just for that. Yeah, I told <laughs> Carrie, well, I'll bet you they'll have like votes or something. Yeah, like once they select their nominees, so you know mm -hmm. we can try and we can try and, and push people to to vote for Carrie. <laughs> it's a, and then it would be called the Sea Link Fox. I mean, my thing is like <laughs> a very simple design. It's just it's just hide the wires, expose the PCIe slot, have the knock behind it. It's not really like a bunch there. It's just like I needed to visualize <laughs> as much as I could, so I just threw together something in Blender in like an hour or two, and uh, just like there we go, there it is. Thankfully, there's like a it. online repository of people that have already made like GPUs. So it's like download that in Blender, download that in Blender. Push, 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 mm. push. I gotta make goddamn splines. All right, here are some wires. No more. <laughs> Clip it into the box. I'm not doing anything else. 
I, I'm less impressed now. I didn't realize that you just were downloading those oh. assets. I was like, wow, he made a GPU. <laughs> no way I made that GPU. No, yeah, I, I, that GPU looks there, too good to be done in an hour. Um, it looks really good. Um, there were a lot of USB C or USB A ports on the back of the of your design carry, like uh, that's, uh, uh, an inordinate amount. <laughs> that's um, yeah. That's again. That's just uh, like a motherboard, a motherboard back. So I got a motherboard, I got a PCI slot, I got a GPU. I was like, delete, 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 push this together, put in boxes here. There we go. Render. There we go. That's an idea. Nice. Um, so yeah, it was just super fast. And there's an online repository where you can just grab that stuff. So didn't spend all that much time with it. It's just uh, messing around with Blender a bit. Yeah. I just, I'm looking at it right now and there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine. USB-A ports on the back of that. Again, I was like, that's a lot of connectivity. A, a lot of this stuff is just, like, you should be, like, not really paying attention to, like, the numbers of things or whatever. They're just conceptual ideas of, like... For me, I don't even want the ports to be on the side where the GPU is. I'd want them to be on the back. But I wasn't going to rotate it. I wasn't going to do other crap. I was just like, slap, slap, slap. Here it is. There it goes. Think about it. I don't care if I win the $10,000. I just would rather than make the design... And, you know, just make it something that looks elegant, something that has really good cable management, has the power supply built in, and hides the power supply within the same NUC design. So you have the power supply on one side, the NUC on the other, and they're just sitting together. It's not like it's terribly difficult. Um, yeah. So it's just a simple design that I think, uh, once you've seen, like, the one dock, it actually looks super really nice. Like, as, like, a, a piece that you could have on your desk as a functional kind of decoration a gpu that's sitting on your desk with just the clean cables it actually looks like very cool i really like the design mm. look of it well speaking of uh compact systems russ you put out a video this morning about uh what was the computer it's called the g22ch as an asus rog pc it's like a small form factor i think it's 10 liter pc and i've had it for months like they so essentially what happened is after I did my like six months later ROG Ally review, they like sent me an email like, they, hey, we really like that video. Uh, we also see you do mini PCs. We don't have any right now, but you want a small PC? And I was like, oh, I could try this out. It's like a new space. And so they sent it over to me and then I spent two months playing around with it. And I'm like, how am I supposed to make a video about this? It's literally just a PC. You know what I mean? <laughs> and so I found my angle and it was just kind of like this is a middle ground one where it's like you don't want to have a mini PC and all the compromises when it comes to performance. And you also don't want to like Tetris in a, a small PC in a, a small form factor case. Right. So here, here's if you want to pay a premium, here's how someone will do it for you. There's all sorts of companies that will do this as well, um, but it just made sense to use Asus just because they have such an established relationship with retailers. Like you can go and price gouge and look between like Amazon and Best Buy and find the deals, you know, and these often will go on sale. And so I thought, ah, this is interesting. And it was, it was crazy. Like it's just such, I've never really reviewed a powerful PC like that before. And so I was really way out of my element because I'm just like, well, I'm just turning all the settings up to the highest they'll go and it's playing great there's your video, right. you know, like it's, just, it's a hard thing to kind of talk about, you know, but I, I thought I found a couple good angles to kind of talk about. And that's why I was doing VR because I was like, well, this thing's so powerful. It can also do VR. So let's I do think, that. Right? You know, going along the same lines, I think that's what's compelling about what B-Link is trying to do here because you take a look at the 7840U, the 8840U, even Intel stuff. Intel, if they put a big heat sink on it, it can go up to 100 watts. And if it's connected to power, you don't care about battery life. It's going to be a fantastic CPU. Right. So if you have a fantastic CPU and you can put in a desktop GPU, you have a full desktop solution that can play a bunch. And yeah, maybe it's not going to be as fast as the highest, high, highest end gaming PC, but you can swap out that GPU and that CPU is going to last you for years. The, the right. 155H is a monster. If you can cool it, hey more power to you like that is a worthwhile thing so if they can sell a 700 dollars thing 800 dollars thing where you can slot in your own gpu i think that's super appealing and that goes along the same lines of what you're saying it's like you know there's all those check boxes of what people find to be their ideal because they're trying to fit it into their space right so sometimes people want yeah. that tetris design they want something that is like literally like a, a cereal box that has a gpu <laughs> right. and everything else um yep. so i don't know I'm, i always love how there's so much to choose from uh and it's never been better really it's a really great time yeah 
That's one of my big takeaways from the video was that the 7840U or 7840HS is what I was testing as a comparison is a really good CPU just from CPU performance. Yeah. Like, so I was doing Cinebench between this $2,000 Asus PC that I was reviewing and then the like $700 Minis Forum that I was yeah. using. And the performance difference between the two was like the, the Minis Forum one was 83% of the yeah. way there basically, but for a third of yeah. the price. Mm -hmm. And so that CPU is really good. You just need some sort of graphics card yeah. with it. Yeah, <clears throat> I keep waiting for Valve to put out a console. Like as soon as they like it, and you know what it would be? It would just be a mini PC with the Valve with a Steam logo on it, and I would buy that thing in a in a second. Yeah. Um. Anyway, Rich, what uh what videos you got coming up, or what did you just drop? So one X player X one that great name <laughs> that's going to be the the next review that should be dropping hopefully tomorrow, but maybe Tuesday. Um, and then I still have the, the two reviews that have been in for a while, but they are pretty much done now. So uh, they should be coming in this week as well. Awesome. Carrie, yep. what do you got coming up? Uh, so the last video I did was uh, I talked about the PlayStation handheld as well. And uh, the only video that I have working on right now is the Retroid Pocket 4 Pro. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. I oh. forgot to say, I finally got mine. Yeah. The analog so, sticks on it are, yeah, nice. are interesting. Um I'm I'm a big you know I I I don't I'm I hesitate because the the opening for my video may come off as as negative <laughs> but it's like I just want to be like would you believe that the company that made this and like show the Retroid Pocket 2 made this <laughs> it's just like right just leaps apart of like yeah. I if you told me you know 3 years ago that this company would be making this I wouldn't have believed you yeah, that makes amazing. sense. It's amazing. I, I, I always like when uh, when people start figuring things out and getting it right after yeah. getting it wrong same. in the past. Yeah, yeah they're, they're yep. banging on all cylinders. Uh, them, I mean, they're the same company, right? Like Retroid Pocket and, and AYN. Uh, they deny it, but yeah. yeah. I mean, their affiliate <laughs> payments come within five minutes of each other. Well, so also, yeah. like the Android builds are made by the same dude uh, between both of them. So hmm. it's like like that same guy. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Uh, unless right. they're just like he's a contractor, I don't think so. <laughs> he's he's working <laughs> on both of them. Um, yeah, uh, but you can like they're both of them. They're like banging on all cylinders now. So you have like the Odin series, which is like their top tier, and the Retroid series. Mm -hmm. I actually love the direction that they've taken because the, the Retroid series has the um, uh, 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 synchronous type of analog sticks like if people like a dual shock more and then the mm -hmm. odin is more of an xbox layout so you have the asynchronous layout oh, there goes one <laughs> <laughs> it was a long episode yeah, Rich. Yeah. nobody's <laughs> nobody's judging you yeah. uh, no. for the audio listeners <laughs> no. one of rich's just lights danger. just ran out of battery <laughs> just full danger right now <laughs> it's like yeah, well, lower the intensity so just I'm not a second ago carrie said something that made rich really really mad and his re his room just turned red <laughs> um yeah but uh i really like what uh ayn and and retroid do they're um probably my favorite android handheld makers at this point i think the only thing that was weird for me was like when i got the uh, uh the retroid puck uh retroid pocket 4 pro is the same thing that happened to you russ you had it early before the update came out so my device started up and the screen was all yellowish and then it booted in and mm. then it fixed itself and i was like huh <laughs> I, yeah, that'll happen every time you boot yeah, it now, yeah. actually, because it's a software yeah, right. fix. Yeah, so it's, uh, it's it's off-putting at first because I feel like I have to, like my eyes adjusted or something, so I just don't look <laughs> at it when I turn it on anymore. I just like look away. Uh, but yeah, um, I'm I, I'm a big fan of what what they've done. They should make a gaming phone. <laughs> <laughs> Drink again. <laughs> we somehow uh, made it. We somehow made it through the uh, PlayStation handheld. Uh, segment and there was no mention of an Xbox handheld. So I thought sure. I knew. It, I thought <laughs> I it was thought coming. It. Like if I you had so bet too. me money, I was yeah. gonna like he is gonna talk about the Series S and all that stuff, and it didn't happen. <laughs> yeah. If you guys he don't know what we're talking about, go watch the Fox's channel at, over at youtubecom slash the Fox T H E P H A W X. Uh, <laughs> hopefully, I spelled that right in my head because I had to think about it. Um, mm -hmm. just make sure you guys check out his stuff. He's got a really good video all about the Xbox series S and how it could be a handheld and it's nine months old and, uh, it's, uh, it's, it holds up. So make sure you guys you check can it actually, out. You can actually watch any video since then. Every video he makes, he mentions it. So, <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, we're all being <laughs> yep. mean to you, Carrie. I'm sorry. I'm just pointing <laughs> my receipts. That's all. Once once it happens, I'll be vindicated. It's that's, that's right. I mean, right. for what it's worth, when the Steam Deck came out, I was already vindicated. I've been. Vi- I've just as long as I just keep on getting vindicated, it's fine. <laughs> that's fair Big that's facts. fair i still think you're wrong about a, a gaming phone i don't want one but you know what i still want one you know, for you <laughs> yeah, that's that's fair <laughs> that's fair i mean it's gonna have those recessed analog sticks it has to because how would you design it yeah. otherwise so it, there's going to be compromises uh but i'm willing to live with them all right well uh i think that that's oh uh did we hit everybody's videos just uh mm-hmm. not i think so yeah, we just talked about what I made, but I don't have anything in the hopper. I okay. I did a swap, like a button swap with my Odin 2, so I might do a video about okay. that. And just because it's nice. like, it looks really nice, like very 90s looking now with the white buttons. So. I like the white buttons. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. All right. Well, you guys could have been anywhere, but you decided to sit down for an hour and 34 minutes with us, and uh, we appreciate it. I hope you guys have a great week, and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Stay right, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye, guys. See you.